Welcome to Virtual Worship at Trinity Lutheran Church. This is the worship service for Sunday, November 28th, 2021. It is the first Sunday of Advent, the first Sunday of the Christian year. So, Happy New Year. In the month of December, we will continue to meet at 8 o'clock and 10.30 on Sunday mornings. We'll also have worship on Christmas Eve. There will be more information about that as the day gets closer. If you or someone you know would like to receive communion during this Advent season at home, perhaps somebody who's not quite comfortable coming to church yet or isn't able to, please send me an email, give me a call so we can make arrangements for that. And as always, if there is anything else that we in your church family can do for you, please let me know. And if there is any way that you feel that you could be a blessing to others through your church family, please let me know. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We light this candle as a symbol of the new identity we have because of the Lord's coming. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. Come, Lord Jesus. The Holy Gospel comes among us in the words of St. Luke, the 21st chapter. There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life, and that day does not catch you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. This is the first Sunday in Advent, and the first Sunday in Advent always has a Gospel reading about the end of the world, about the return of Jesus, about the end times. And as I was getting ready to preach during this season of Advent in 2021, I came across a series that focused on the themes, the traditional themes of the Sundays of Advent. Love, peace, hope, joy. And the, the overarching theme of this series is that God's love is boundless. God's peace is boundless. God's hope is boundless. God's joy is boundless. And I thought I would delve into this way of thinking about Advent because it fits in nicely with the theme for the youth gathering that's coming up next summer. The theme is boundless, and it references Ephesians 3.8, the boundless riches of Christ, the boundless goodness of God. Boundless love. Boundless. It's kind of a, it's, it's an interest, it's an interesting word. I think we might look at it sometimes and think, well, boundless, that just means, you know, like overflowing love or a whole lot of love, maybe even infinite love. But as I thought and reflected on this more and more, boundless is something different 
than infinite. Because I was reminded of something that I learned when studying astrophysics. Now I know, you know I'm going to get all nerdy on you, but I'm not going to get theology nerdy. We're going to get science nerdy just for a minute. But I think this is a helpful, I think this is a helpful distinction. There's the idea that the universe, the universe can be infinite or finite, and it could be bounded or it could be unbounded or boundless. And those are different things. We know the difference between finite and infinite, right? Finite is limited. There's a certain number of things. There's a certain amount of space. It's finite. Infinite means it's unlimited. There's no limitation. It's beyond, beyond comprehension. There's no, there's no set number or set amount or set space. It's infinite. And then there's bounded, and we understand what bounded means. Bounded means there's a boundary around it. There's a fence, there's a wall, there's a, there's a force field, there's something that defines the area. It's bounded. And boundless is there are no boundaries. There is no fence. There is no wall. There's just openness. And see, the thing is, is that the universe can be infinite and boundless. And that's, and that's maybe the way that we think of it, is that it just goes on forever and there are no boundaries, there's no, there's no fence at the end of the universe. It just keeps on going. But the, but the universe could be infinite and bounded. Think of it this way. Think of if the universe is a cylinder, a cylinder that goes on forever and ever, that, there, that goes on infinitely. It's still infinite, but it's bounded. It has a boundary. There are limits to where you can go and what can happen. And see, I think sometimes we think of God's love as infinite, but bounded. That God's love is infinite. There, there is no end to it. There are no limitations on the amount of God's love for the world. And yet we fall into the trap that, well, but maybe it's not for some people. Maybe there are some people who are outside of God's love. You know, and we all have, we all have our kinds of people, our group of people, our individuals. We might say, well, you know, God's love and forgiveness is for everybody, but, well, you know, come on. There are some people that are just so evil, so unrepentant, so nasty, that maybe, maybe, maybe there is, maybe, maybe God's love is infinite, but it has a boundary. And I would say to you, my brothers and sisters, that God's love is boundless. There are no boundaries. It's infinite and boundless. There are no walls. There's no fence that you could be on the other side of with God. Yes, can we resist God? Sure. Can we do things that are sinful? Of course. Can we do things that are absolutely horrible and destructive of other people and ourselves? Obviously we can, and it happens all too often. But none of that places us outside of God's love. None of that separates us from God's love. And we can see that when we look at the world. Because God's love continuously comes to all of us, to people all over the world, in all walks of life, in all kinds of situations. Because God comes to us not just in the extraordinary things, but in the ordinary things. The fact that if you're watching this, you got up this morning and took a breath. You did. You're breathing. That's a miracle. That's an incredible thing. That you're alive. 
God comes to us in our breath. That's something that we don't even think about. But that, that oxygen, that air goes into our lungs and empowers our bodies. It's an incredible thing. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the breath of God, comes into us and animates us and empowers us and enlivens us in ordinary, in ordinary ways, in the ordinary things that we do. Can we recognize that God's provision and protection comes to us throughout every single day in ways that we just take for granted? You know, we get up and take a breath. We have food to eat. We have clean water to drink. We go and have clothes that we could put on our bodies, shoes for our feet. Most of us have a, have a car that we can go out and start, and it starts up and we could drive to work or drive our kids to school or do whatever we have to do. That God comes to us in these ordinary ways. That God's love is expressed to us in these ordinary ways. That, that, that it's, not, it's not bounded. It's boundless. It comes in all kinds of ways. In a wide variety of ways. And it comes even though we don't always recognize it. And that's always been a problem for us, hasn't it? recognizing the things of God. I mean, Jesus points that out in a big way in, in the gospel. He says, don't you realize, you, you could look at the signs, you can see that the day of the Lord is coming. And of course, we've, there have been plenty of people who have messed that up time after time after time and predicted the end of the world. And the one thing that everybody that predicts the end of the world has in common is that they've all been wrong. But perhaps Jesus is is telling us not only about the day when he comes back, not only the day when the Son of Man appears in the clouds with great glory, but maybe he's trying to say to us that that day comes, Christ comes into our lives every day, time after time. And unless we're paying attention, we're going to miss it. And that, this, that Christ's coming isn't a bad thing, but it's a good thing. That he says, he says, Raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. Your freedom is drawing near. Your joy is drawing near. When Christ comes into our lives, redemption is at hand. Freedom is at hand. And I would say Christ doesn't just come at the end in great glory, but Christ comes in the ordinary things day after day. That there is no limit to whom Christ can come. There is no limit on the times that Christ can come. There is no limit on the ways that Christ can come. Because the love of God, the love of Christ, is not only infinite. It's not only bigger than we can imagine, deeper than we can imagine, more transforming than we can imagine. But it is truly for everyone. And it is especially for us when we feel that we don't deserve it or that we can't feel it or that it's just somehow beyond us. The love of Christ is especially for us on those days because it is boundless. Thanks be to God. If my heart is overwhelmed and I cannot hear your voice I hold on to what is true Though I cannot see If the storms of life they come And the road ahead gets steep I will lift these hands in faith I will believe I remind myself of all that you've done And the life I have because of your son Love came down and rescued me Love came down and set me free And I am yours I am forever yours Mountain high or valley low I sing out, remind my soul That I am yours 
season of watching and waiting, let us pray for all people and places that yearn for God's presence. God of presence and peace, strengthen your church around the globe to proclaim the message of your love coming to the world. Open our hearts to recognize your face in all people and in all of creation. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. God of mighty redwoods and microscopic plants, fields and city parks, the wind and the waves be a healing balm to our wounded planet. May we nurture what you have lovingly created. Hear us, O oh God. God of equity and compassion, 
Bring righteousness and goodness to all peoples of the earth. Give a heart of discernment and integrity to leaders in our communities. Hear us, O God. God of comfort and care, be present with those who watch and wait. Come to all who await births, deaths, divorces, new unions, new jobs, retirements, healing, and life transitions of every kind. We especially pray for Ellie, Michael, Kurt and Cindy, Julie, Edith, Laurie, Paul, Candy, Vanessa, John, Jackie, Gerhard, Brianna and Eliana, Steve and Ellie, Joanne and Frank, Judy, Sapphire, Diane, Dwayne, Reese Ash family, Oris, Paul, Lynn Marie, Steve, Clara, Ralph and Nina, Carol, Rhoda, Emily, Cheryl, Jason and family, Jean, Mike, Chris, Alma, Jamie, Dan, Cam, Josh, Dennis, Maggie, Ed, Gail and Richard, Holly, Deb, Sue, Caitlin, Helen, Don, Wendy, Mark, Gildo, Dean, Max, Aiden, Noreen, Helen, Lily, Julian, Marianne, Elvira, Janet, Jennifer, Gladys, Diane, Megan, Diana, Ken, Chris, Kurt, Bill, Connie, Chris, Peter, Joan, Andrew, Joe, Gregory, Deanna, all of our shut-ins, the people of Shishmaref and all Alaskan villages. Hear us, O God. God of promises kept and new dreams awakened, shelter your people from destructive storms. We pray for those whose lives have been upended by natural disasters, for the work of Lutheran Disaster Response, Lutheran World Relief, and all other relief organizations. Hear us, O God. Here, other intercessions may be offered. God of companionship and community, we give you thanks for the saints who journeyed with us and now abide in you. Even in distress and uncertainty, make us confident that your promises endure forever. Hear us, O God. God of new life, you come among us in the places we least expect. Receive these prayers and those of our hearts. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us pray together using the words that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us for worship today. As I've said, we are meeting in person at 8 o'clock and 1030. We've been having Bible study and Sunday school in between services at 915. In Bible study, we are working our way through the book of Judges from a kind of unique perspective on how God's grace is, is continually revealed in that story, even though there are a lot of really horrible things that happen in that book. The grace of God is still at work. So if you'd like to join us, even though we're kind of moving toward the end, you're welcome to, uh, you're welcome to be a part of that. And of course, children from preschool through grade five are welcome at Sunday school at 915. And we have confirmation class on Sundays at seven, sometimes on Zoom, sometimes here in person. If you'd like more information about any of those things, please reach out to me. And now may Almighty God, who raised again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, bless you abundantly. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.